While we've learned the basic concepts of torque and moment of inertia in AP Physics 1, how do we define these ideas in AP Physics C? As in AP Physics 1, the main entity that influences objects to rotate is known as torque. While we define this as a force times a lever arm or the perpendicular component of a distance between force location and pivot point, we can use vectors to redefine torque as the cross product between radius and force vectors. While this equation provides the same scalar value of the torque's magnitude as our previous equation, the direction of our torque vector can now be calculated using what's known as the right hand rule. Pointing your right index finger in the R direction, your middle finger in the F direction, with your thumb pointing in the torque vector's direction. As a quick review, torque contributes to the rotation of objects while forces makes objects' center of masses move. In static situations or situations in equilibrium, the net force and net torque on the system both must equal zero. However, in situations where objects accelerate either linearly or rotationally, use Newton's second law and the formula torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration to set up your force and torque equations. With this updated review, let's look at a concept briefly discussed from AP Physics 1, moment of inertia. If you remember back, moment of inertia measures an object's resistance to rotation, and comes in the form of some constant k times a mass times some length squared. The constant k depends on the mass distribution, and you most likely memorized many constants for different shapes and geometries. In AP Physics C, we can actually derive each of these constants for different shapes. To do this, we need to learn the equation for moment of inertia, the integral of the radius squared with respect to infinitesimal masses dm. Essentially, we'll sum up tiny pieces of the shape and calculate each of their contributions to the overall moment of inertia. To show you how this process works, let's find the moment of inertia of a uniform rod of mass m and length l about its center. The trick to deriving moment of inertias is to relate the infinitesimal mass, dm, to other quantities given, and then to integrate to cover the entire shape as a whole. Here, defining our r-axis like this, each tiny piece of mass, dm, can actually be defined as a density of the shape times an infinitesimal length, dr. While density is usually mass divided by volume, our shape here is technically only length, so the linear density would just be mass over length. Plugging this into our equation and integrating along the axis to cover the entire length of the rod, we can integrate to find our equation, which should look really familiar as it's identical to the one given to you in AP Physics 1. One other amazing equation related to moment of inertia is known as the parallel axis theorem, which relates the moment of inertia about the center of mass of an object to the moment of inertia of this same object about anywhere else in space. Applying this equation to our rod to calculate the moment of inertia about the end of the rod, we once again arrive at a very familiar result from AP Physics 1. Moment of inertia, especially deriving the values of different geometries, can be quite complicated at first, and may even require different integration techniques like using spherical or cylindrical coordinates. However, as long as you define the infinitesimal mass in a correct way and make sure to cover the shape's entire volume, area, or length, you will now be able to calculate the moment of inertia of any object at any point in space. With that, you can feel good that you just finished learning about the AP Physics C versions of torque and moment of inertia.